Are there acts of genocide now taking place in Gaza? Without a doubt, in my view, I think that when it comes to international legal processes, they're long and they're enmeshed, of course, with international politics, right? Uh, but if we if we uh, uh, if we understand that uh, genocide requires the special intent to destroy, right? And we're seeing it now across the board in Israeli politics and society and culture. Anyone who follows Hebrew language sources see it everywhere, annihilatory, explicit, unashamed language. We see it at the very top, as, as you said, Chris, the Israeli president, army officers, everything will be eliminated. Uh, you have Gallant, uh, Daniel Agari, Israeli army spokesperson, the uh, focuses on destruction and not accuracy. And of course it is. Thousands and thousands and thousands of bombs, right, within a few days. Uh, the use of white phosphorus, and, you know, there's no time, but I invite readers to check what that means. It's a kind of weapon that burns, right, uh, in air, and nothing uh, uh, can, can you know, stop it. Uh, um, uh, once we have the special intent that is just on display here, and I explained why, because of the use of the Holocaust in this way, because of the portrayal of a world turned upside down, which I want to remind everyone, Putin did just that when he invaded Ukraine. He talked about, quote unquote, denazification. And this was after, by the way, two years earlier, he was at Yad Vashem, celebrated, right, as an icon of the West, invited to, uh, 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 to a big international conference at Yad Vashem, where he distorted the history of the Holocaust, right, presented a distorted picture that elides the German-Soviet uh, uh, pact in 1939 that allowed the destruction of Poland, presented Ukrainians at Yad Vashem as primarily Nazi collaborators, and then used this portrayal and this language when he invaded uh, um, uh, Ukraine in February 9, 2022. Uh, and we're seeing it uh, right now as well. And that explains also the annihilatory explicit language, mm -hmm. on, for example, Russian media that we've seen, and also the unashamed and explicit, because if we're talking about Nazis, then there is no law. Everything is permissible. Right now, when you take the special intent together with the kinds of violence that we're seeing, because of course, not every time that that uh, we see bombings of civilian populations, uh, uh, we can talk about genocide. It doesn't really matter for the people under attack, of course, right? Uh, um, but uh, uh, but for the purpose here, once we can we see it with the special intent, so these bombings are genocidal killings, and once we see an explicit. Now, think about it. Yoav Gallant took the 17-year-old illegal siege. Think about the levels of Israeli impunity, right? The mm -hmm. longest siege in modern history, right? And upgraded it to a complete siege, which is a new term, by the way. As far as I can see, as far as I've checked, this is a new term, complete siege. It tells us everything we need to know about the, the, the direction of genocidal travel, right? And he said, no food, no water, no fuel, no nothing. Everything will be closed. Everything will be eliminated. Right. This is creating conditions designed to bring about the destruction of the group. So, so Raz, can I can I take that on then? So, do you do you think when Netanyahu also talked about recasting the Middle East, this would be this would change it forever? I mean, is is this really about driving the Palestinians out of Gaza and also out of the West Bank? It's not. It's also ethnic cleansing. Is is this is this part of the plan that? really has been kind of fast forwarded by the Hamas attacks. It's, it's given a great, it's obviously given Netanyahu this fantastic opportunity to unify the nation that he hopes. I mean, he's obviously getting a lot of blame from a lot of Israelis. But is this the opportunity for him and some of the extremists in his cabinet to push for this agenda of finally clearing out Palestinians from those areas that, uh, that Israel would like to include in the greater Israel? Look, there, there's, you know, there's a question of genocide now on Gaza, and I think, and I think, as I said, in my view, it's very clear it is indeed a textbook because of the explicit special intent that we see on display. But we have to be clear, the Israeli violence against Palestinians is a structural systemic issue since the creation of the Israeli state, since the Nakba, uh, uh, um, through military occupation, through siege, through apartheid policies. It's all well, well, well documented. There is no Hamas in the West Bank. Hamas does not control the West Bank. And yet we see an unbelievably process of ethnic cleansing taking place in the West Bank, uh, which has intensified uh, uh, in the past year. Um, now also, by the way, 
right? There is no Hamas in the West Bank. Israel has killed dozens of Palestinians since the 7th of October in the West Bank, has accelerated and intensified this ethnic cleansing with the destruction of whole communities of Palestinians now under Israeli military occupation, right? There is no Hamas, right? Uh, um, so yes, absolutely. This is not, this does not, the Hamas attack was an absolute war crime, without a doubt, right? But we, we have to see this in a larger context. This does not in any way justify this horrendous crime, this mass murder of more than a thousand Israelis and probably more now with the, with the new numbers coming out, right? But we have to see this in this broader context of basically creating the idea, the imagination, the fantasy of creating a Jewish state without Palestinians. And I have to say one last thing, which is very important on my end. There is no military solution to, for this right? No proportional or disproportional response. There is no military solution for this. There are 7 million Jews and 7 million pa Palestinians on that land, and the future belongs to both of them, right? So we, we need to, if we, what is the solution? Well, if we really take seriously the lessons of the Holocaust, if we want to use that phrase, right? The solution is to forefront victims and survivors of state violence and genocide, not portray them as, as evil and Nazis. The solution is accountability. We have clear incitement for genocide. That's punishable under Article 3 of the Convention, even if genocide does not follow, right? And we need to talk about truth and justice. We need to dismantle a settler colonial state, and we need to create a state that's based on equality, on freedom and dignity for everyone who lives there. Thank you very much, Rez. And I know that you have to leave us shortly.